To cap off the decade, we return to the rough coastlines of Japan for the utterly bizarre film, Horrors of Malformed Men. It was co-written and directed by notorious cult filmmaker Teruo Ishii and is a fine example of his trademark style. A genre picture that is unafraid to strip away convention and taste. Weird as hell. Finding a safe haven in Japan's emerging pink film movement, which was a categorization of films containing sexual content. Indeed, Horrors of Malformed Men features more Japanese tits than a Nagasaki aviary. While Ishii's more explicitly violent tendencies crop up throughout the film, Malformed Men is less visually grim than the director's other 1969 effort, Inferno of Torture. Regardless, it is still a movie that creeps at the fringe of cinema that must be seen to be believed. <laughs> Horrors of Malformed Men is a fascinating film, and to simply summarise the plot, as I usually would here, would not do it justice. To provide some context for you, in the broadest of terms, the story follows a medical student who escapes his unlawful containment within an asylum, and is swept up in a mystery that brings him to a mysterious island inhabited by a mad scientist and his army of mutated animalistic subjects. To western ears, the summary evokes shades of Dr. Moreau and his island of beastly followers, but really it is a joint adaptation of two novels by Irugawa Rampo, of whom Ishii was a lifelong fan. While the story does hook you in with a basic but intriguing puzzle for the audience and the protagonist to solve, just like the previous Japanese asylum horror featured in this series, A Page of Madness, Horrors of Malformed Men earns its stripes via a darkly rich atmosphere. As an audience member, you constantly have no idea what unexpected sights will before your eyes next. Frightful spiders, insane encounters, deformed monsters, routines performed by real circus entertainers, weird surgeries, disturbing torture, sudden abstract editing techniques, uncomfortable freeze frames, harsh filters, police procedural style revelations, and a repeated performance by the main villain that puts Kate Bush's dance moves to shame. The antagonist, Jogoro, is a major highlight. He is a fully realised villain, with clear, understandable motivations and goals, and a complete backstory that does not diminish the intrigue or threat. Appearance-wise, he reminds me of an unsettling Asian blend of Lord Summerlisle and Charles Manson. Most importantly, he remains a positively threatening and unhinged presence, from roaring start to desperate finish. It is best to know as little as possible going in, with shocking surprises occurring consistently throughout even to the film's final unique moments. So, I will end my review here. It is now time then to give my top three films of the 1960s, from the movies featured in this series. In no particular order, I give to you. 1960, Peeping Tom, a beautifully shot proto-slasher that was much maligned, but way ahead of its time. 1966, The Plague of the Zombies, an underrated and very fun film from Hammer, the horror masters of the period. And lastly, today's feature, 1969, Horrors of Malformed Men, a film so twisted and absurd that I could not take my eyes off it. There you go, and here we are, halfway through 100 years of horror. I hope you are enjoying this series as much as I am. As always, a very big thank you to everyone who watches, likes, comments, and subscribes. Here's to the next 50 years, things are going to get bloody.